So let's continue right now with BPM Count 3, the future of BPM, with Dr. Mohamed Katabchi, Vice President of Strategy at Progress Software. Dr. Katabchi also likes to be called Dr. K. Good morning, Dr. K. Good morning. In his case study this morning, Dr. K will take us inside Motorola, one of the world's largest mobile and networking manufacturers. He'll show us how Motorola is using a new level of BPM called Responsive Process Management, or RPM, to capture new levels of ROI and business value across design time and runtime phases. So let's go inside with Dr. K in his case study. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Lance. Most of the contents of this presentation come from a presentation given by Beth Weimer of Motorola at Gartner BPM Summit in March of this year. Founded in 1928, Motorola is well known for their technology used to transmit the first words from a man on the moon back to Earth, as well as creating iconic cell phones such as the StarTech, Razer, and more recently, Droid. Motorola also invented Six Sigma processes that many companies use today. Motorola is organized into three distinct business units, enterprise mobility solutions, home and network mobility, and mobile devices. Mobile devices business, perhaps most well-known, designs, manufactures, sells, and services wireless handsets with integrated software and necessary products that I am sure many of you use. Achieving unprecedented uh, ROI with Savion BPM, uh, Motorola did that by automating their global supply chain using Progress Savion BPM. They achieved ROI in 11 days. They reduced buy-sell cycle, an important metrics in their business given the rate of change and innovation in cell phone business from two days to four hours. One of Motorola's major initiatives last year was the order management program. They wanted to increase customer satisfaction by improving processing their orders. The challenge, of course, was that the existing order management process spans multiple business units with dozens of system touch points. End-to-end -end process visibility is limited, resulting in missing customer committed ship dates. Visibility into orders solves this problem. Out of hundreds of process steps, Key steps of the process were selected to give business and IT users visibility into the performance of order fulfillment processes. These process steps are monitored so that if something occurs out of expected sequence, alerts are raised. The key benefit from this project is that end-to-end -end visibility gives the latest information about fulfillment and shipping steps to a single dashboard. Data that is collected to monitor these process steps is made available to users in a way that makes sense to them through a dashboard. I am sure many of you have seen architecture diagrams like the one shown in this slide. At Motorola, BPM is the business face of their SOA infrastructure. Most of you have seen architecture diagrams like this. Business processes provide the top-down view, and SOA provides the bottom-up view. The challenge, of course, is to ensure that they meet in the middle. And the best way to achieve that is to start with process, because that ensures services developed have business purpose and contribute to healthy execution of business processes. Motorola has expanded the use of BPM beyond the classic BPM life cycle, shown on the left-hand side diagram on this slide. Model, 
execute, monitor, and improve processes. It may be unnecessary to re-automate processes that are already in execution. Hence, the executed step is eliminated, which leads to what I have called non-classic BPM life cycle shown on the right-hand side. For this non-classic BPM life cycle, progress provides out-of-the-box functionality. Most BPM products today support only the classic BPM life cycle. Business Process Optimization Services Center of Excellence was established in Motorola in 2005. It is structured as part of the IT organization, and its key functions and services include developing standards for modeling, monitoring, and process automation. This includes things like the level of detail expected in different types of process models, design standards for automation projects, etc. Lead and support process modeling initiatives, for example, work with business teams to help them learn how to model their processes, work with other IT teams to develop capability roadmaps, where to go next in process automation, what tools will be needed. While in 2009, Motorola was focused on non-classic BPM life cycle, as we discussed, in 2010, they planned to focus on process modeling before large programs are approved and technology decisions are made. As a result of this upfront analysis, they have the opportunity to make decisions based on business values. Motorola has started to review all of their processes across the enterprise to rationalize and then document what is not documented yet. The key goal is to reduce the total number of business processes by consolidation and best practices. The ultimate goal, of course, is to streamline and improve processes before IT does automation. This will help Motorola to identify the best solution as well as rationalize IT spending. Thank you. Dr. K, thanks very much for that look inside Motorola, especially at what they've been doing the last couple of years, as well as the future of BPM and how they're going to put that to use in 2010 and beyond. One of the themes I wanted to ask you quickly about in the time we have left is this idea of end-to-end -end visibility. It seems as though Motorola is working with Progress and Savion to get a sense of how to take BPM beyond a departmental context. Can you talk a little bit about how important that end-to-end -end visibility is? Absolutely. While improving individual processes can generate reasonable ROI, the big ROIs like the ones uh, Motorola achieved are often become possible by improving end-to-end -end enterprise business processes where multiple related processes need to execute in coordination. Many organizations, not just internally, potentially some external organizations, as well as many applications are involved. A good example, of course, is the Motorola global supply chain. A global supply chain is not a single process, consists of multiple processes, some of these processes and some of the steps of processes are potentially, most probably, in fact, are executed by supplier outside the Motorola. It is visibility into this end-to-end -end enterprise process, ability to improve the performance end-to-end -end process, which makes achieving large ROI such as the one Motorola achieved possible. That is just so exciting because the theme that I got from some of your architecture slides is that 
with SOA and event technologies, the IT architect is really a big enabler in this end-to-end visibility theme. It's not only the realm of the business analyst. Absolutely. BPM and the next evolution of it, as we are going to discuss in detailed presentation, I am going to give later, possible by collaboration and coordination between IT and business. It is not one or the other. They need to work together to make it possible. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from that session later. Dr. K, thanks very much. Thank you, Ivan.